Lead singer of the legendary Australian band The Masters Apprentices, Jim Keyes, is known in rock and roll circles as the creator of influential and enduring Australian songs. Forty years on, The Masters are back in vogue and on a national tour, and Jim Keyes has a new critically acclaimed solo album. Not bad for a bloke with a cancer his doctor says should have slowed him down by now. Tracy Hutchinson reports. <laughs> They were the pin-up boys of Australia's summer of love. Irreverent and wild, and Australia couldn't get enough of them. Screaming girls and getting our clothes ripped off and all that sort of stuff. We got the name as being the bad boys. I, I suppose because we sort of looked a bit rougher. We had longer hair and we wore black leather outfits and nobody else did. And with very tight trousers. <laughs> <laughs> they were, yeah, well, I admit that. Um, but, yeah, look, uh, I thought we worked on a couple of levels there. We always had strong musical integrity, but at the same time, we had a visual thing too. We uh, wanted to look good as well as sound good, and, uh, yeah, it sort of worked in the most part. As frontman for the legendary Masters Apprentices, Jim Keyes vocalised the soundtrack of a country coming of age. While England had the Stones and the US had the Doors, Australia had the Masters, with a string of hits that defined a generation. People come up to me now and say, you know, that just changed my life at the time because, you know, I, I realised then that I could do what I wanted to do and I could be what I wanted to be. And that's a great thing to, to think that you've in some way changed things. It's lived on that song. The Hoodoo Guru's Dave Faulkner, one of many to dip his musical lid to their legacy. Guru's 1995 recording of the Masters hit marked the band's 30th anniversary and brought them back together. We had a ball. It was it was a bit of a tall order for us trying to step into those shoes. You know, they're pretty big ones to fill, and that original recording is still flawless to me. So we weren't trying to beat it or anything, but we just hoped that we could at least pass muster as being you know worthy of playing the song. Forty roller coaster years of rock and roll have delivered Jim Keyes his share of accolades, gold records, place in the ARIA Hall of Fame, even an Australia Post stamp. But amid the rock star spoils and a newfound passion for watercolours has been the none too small discovery of the Big C, a 2007 diagnosis of multiple myeloma. Having cancer is a damned inconvenience. <laughs> now, the prognosis is pretty good. I've got one of those uh, cancers that they can shut down. It's not, one of, it's not the one where you get diagnosed and you're dead three weeks later. You know, I had my initial treatment and they said, look, you could go five or more years and not have a problem. And I'm five years now and um, I'm still pretty good. Now in his 65th year and five years living with cancer, Jim Keyes is showing no signs of slowing down. A brand new record and a brand new band with an all too familiar sound. It's fantastic to have young guys playing with you, you know, it just gives you a, a new energy and, and because they're so young and full of energy, it transfers to you, you know. Mum and Dad are driving me around as, as a six year old hearing, you know, because I love you on the radio, it's not something that you would ever expect to find yourself doing, so it's fantastic. Four decades after the Masters made their mark, Jim Keyes is back where it began, talking up a noisy new record and riding a new wave of popularity. In the 80s and 90s, if I walked into a record company, I'd get laughed out the door. You know, I was a has-been. You, you've had it, mate. Go away and die, mate, you know. But there is a bit of excitement around about it, so I'm happy. I'm, I'm going to go for the ride this time and see what, where it takes me, you know. <laughs> How would you just define or describe what the Jim Keyes philosophy has been? Probably do what you want to do and be what you want to be. <laughs> I think that's probably it and I didn't even realise it at the time. Tracy Hutchinson with that story.